we have a kind of wood box. <laughs> it's like a farmhouse style wood box. Actually, this is the top part when you open it. It has really cool interior designed with ropes and a little pulley system so the lid doesn't fly all the way open. And I thought we could do a little farmhouse scene on this. So if you know me, if you're a Top Drawer RBA follower, you know that sometimes I do these farmhouse scenes where I do like a sky with clouds and then I do like a barn or like an old shed or crows, a fence post, all the things, right? So for this project, I thought we could do, um, we could start the sky and then depending on how far we get, if we don't finish it here on this page today, you can come over to my page, Top Drawer RBA, and we will finish it together. So let's get started. I've got a, a lot, a lot of paint on the floor <laughs> because when I do these projects, um, these bigger kind of many colored projects, I open up a ton of things in the floor and just go for it. I mean, that's usually the way we go and it's the way that works for me. So I will try and tell you as I use each color, what is coming up. The only color I could not find today, and I usually use it in my sky scenes, is my manatee gray. Um, because I don't have manatee gray today, I'm gonna substitute with hurricane gray, which means it might be a very dark and cloudy sky that we create together here on the Dixie Bell paint page, but that's okay. I like a, a moody piece and sometimes you just need to paint a little bit of a moody sky with some clouds on it. Let's jump in, shall we? Okay, I'm opening up my blues and I'm opening up my whites here on the floor. This little box has been cleaned and scuff sanded, um, cleaned with white lightning, and then we basically just took this piece and I just threw on a really thin coat of fluff. So why did I throw on a coat of paint already? Well, I like to have a strong base because today's plan with this kind of cloudy ombre sky is to use my best dang brush <laughs> and i had somebody ask me this week hey what's the name of that brush that you're using and i said it's the best dang brush and i was like no really what like i know it's your best dang brush but what what's the name of the brush i'm like no it is the best dang brush that is the name of this brush <laughs> So it is a natural and synthetic fiber brush that does really great kind of like swirls and swirls on here to create a beautiful cloudy sky. But it's a pokey brush, like it's it's fairly stiff. So if I were to come in here and say maybe do an ombre blend and start ombre blending it together, I might pull back that paint a little bit. And even though this piece is gonna be sanded around the edges, a little more rustic, I don't wanna pull back all of the paint that we're using today. So that, that one kind of thin coat of fluff is going to like be my gripper so that when my paint goes on, it will grip it really well. It's also um, a great time to use primer. Like if you wanted to use your boss or your slick stick, that nice white base will always be a good start to any project, all right? So let's jump in, shall we? On the floor, I have multitude of brushes down here. It really doesn't matter what I use. My main tool for today's project is gonna be that best dang brush along with the spray misting bottle filled with water. That's going to help me ombre blend my colors together. I also have a uh, paper towel. So when you see me blotting off my brush because that brush is gonna hold a lot of color, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see me kind of pull back, wipe it off and then go back to it. So let's jump in. So, like I said, my usual favorite and my usual go-to is um, Manatee Gray, but Hurricane Gray is gonna have to do in the meantime, which is a bit of a darker color, because I can't find that Manatee Gray. I must have used it, and I don't know where I, um, I don't know where I put it. So I'm gonna start up here by just doing a little bit of depositing some color. By depositing this color, and it doesn't even matter if you brush it on or you blot it on, I just wanna kind of get an idea of where the sky is gonna start. Remember, this is the top of the piece, right? It opens up. Normally this would be like the top part that you would sit on, but I have it in this position that so you can see what I'm doing. And then if we get that far, I can flip it and, and work on the front where I'm gonna put that barn and the cute stuff and it will go together really well. Hello, I see people watching. Hi, Kim. Okay, so this is Hurricane Gray. Um, I don't want it to be like too dark of a sky. So I'm gonna use the same brush. And with the same brush, I'm gonna jump into some dusty blue. And with that dusty blue, when I do actually come in here and combine the colors together, it's going to be an easy enough blend. So I don't want it to be like 100% dark. I just want like in the middle dark. So let's put on this dusty blue. Dusty blue is always a really nice sky blue for me. Again, we're just kind of depositing these colors to see where they're gonna live. This will be the top of the piece. I think I wanna put a little bit in the middle, that dusty blue and come up. Now, I am gonna switch brushes out. 
I think I'm gonna go a bit lighter. So along with these blues, I also have a little bit of sea glass, which is, is a little bit more green, like a greenish, lightish blue. There's not gonna be a lot of this, and to be honest with you, I don't even think you're gonna see it that much. When we blend out this color palette, it's kind of just gonna disappear. But it's, it's a nice transition. You don't wanna go from like stark dark blue to like a really bright white. This is just gonna help really pull those colors together. So let's get a little bit of that sea glass on here. So these sky scenes that I create as a, like a backdrop, as a, you know, for my meadows, for my farms, for whatever it is that I'm painting, they always look really good. I really feel like people should try to do a sky at least once to see if you like it because ooh, it's clicking. It's, um, it's a great way just to get a really pretty base down for the project that you're working on. And it always looks, I don't know, it just always looks so good. <laughs> I really like it. You know what I need to do is just paint a whole piece in the sky. If I do that, the whole piece in the sky, maybe I'll get it out of my system and I'll stop doing it all the time. Okay, so there we go. We have Hurricane Gray, Dusty Blue, a little bit of that sea glass. Now, I'm gonna put some white in here too. And you know what, I think I'm gonna use the same brush as the sea glass. This is just fluff. Again, this is all going to be pushed together with that best dang brush. And then we're going to add some clouds on there too. How's everybody doing? Hanging in this middle of the week Wednesday? It's a little bit cloudy outside, but the leaves are turning a beautiful color here in Richmond, Virginia. It's quite, uh, quite lovely. I feel like I need to take a drive in the country because it's just so gorgeous out. So this box is quite rustic. Okay, it's got um, like nails and screws that are visible on the front. It's got wood and rope kind of handles on the side. It's, it's a nice box. I prefer a rusty, crusty, rustic box like this over another style, especially when I do that barn painting or like the old painting with the crows. Like I, I like a, a rustic look. You're gonna find that the more rustic a box is or a cupboard is, the better it looks when you do that really cool farmhouse look. And if you wanna see different photos of the previous looks that I've done before, you can always check them out on my Instagram. The Top Drawer RVA has all my photos. It's an easy way to kind of get in there and see them all. I really like to do this. All right, so here's the ticket. See this hot mess right here? Doesn't look like much. Can anybody do this? Sure can. Now, what we're gonna do is take this best dang brush Remember I said it's a hard brush, right? It's a thicker bristle brush. You're gonna see me hold it closer to the bristles and that's gonna give me a little bit more control. That's gonna allow me to swirl gently and make those swirls happen and make the sky happen. Let's see, it's blowing a gale, a blowing a big wind in Scotland, is it? You know what I should do is I should paint like a Scottish scene with like rocks and make it just look more like area specific. That would be very cool. I would like that. Okay, best thing brush, water on my brush towel on my lap to wipe it off as I go along, holding it close to the bristles, and we're gonna to start to ombre blend. It's gonna be noisy. Ah! I'm gonna to have to keep my finger on it. I wanna to start to pull these colors together a little bit. Here's the deal. This is a sky. There's no rules with how a sky looks. If you wanna add more white, or you wanna add more blue, go for it. There is absolutely zero rules when it comes to painting a sky because a sky looks different every single time you look at it, right? It's not like it's going to be the same on my piece of furniture as it's going to be in your furniture. They're always going to look a little bit different. I'm not going to be able to really see this corner very well, like coming down over top with a lip. So I'm just going to hope that it blends as I do this <laughs> and look on the side. Why do I spray my brush rather than spray the piece? If I start spraying up here, what's gonna happen is the water is going to run down. And as that water runs down the piece, it's going to pull the paint back some, right? Then when I come at it with this really thick kind of pokey brush, what's gonna happen is you're, you're not gonna get a nice even surface. Doing these small swirls in this small circular motion is just enough to really cloud it up, make it look authentic, without spraying it silly and dragging that paint everywhere where it shouldn't be. Doing these little smoky swirls, right, are just enough to create clouds and texture where there really wasn't any before. Let's see, hello, happy Wednesday. 
So I'm just doing the same thing over the whole piece. I'm gonna bring these colors together. If you find that your paint does get dry quickly, I mean, I'm, I'm talking and I'm working and I'm talking and I'm working. So this is kind of drying up fairly fast, probably faster than it normally would. You can spray your piece a little bit, but I wouldn't suggest spraying too much because what's gonna happen is your paint is just gonna start to, um, to run down and you're not gonna want that. We can add more clouds in after we get this kind of smoked out base. The clouds are the easy part. Getting this part kind of to look cohesive is the, a little bit more difficult. And again, I'm gonna try and hold it still because this lid is gonna slam back. And I wanna put more gray up in that corner. I do like that hurricane gray. I didn't think I would like the darkness of it, but I like it. This is where the arm muscles come in, people. People ask me if I go to the gym. I say, no, I do not. I just hold the best dang brush and do my painting. Can you see how the cloud is starting to come together? Can you see how it's starting to, uh, to look cloudy, to look a little smoky? The white isn't staying true white anymore. It's getting mixed in with that sea glass. You can bring some of that sea glass up if you want and create like the clouds kind of fluffing out. It's up to you. I want to keep it, I think, a little bit more blue. I think I want a little bit more bluish gray. But wouldn't this be pretty on like a whole piece of furniture? The whole thing as a big giant cloud? I mean, personally, I love that. I like how soft it looks. You guys want to come in a little bit closer and see? There we are. So I'm holding this lid because it's moving around some as I'm working. And I've got, I've got this propped up on my, on my stool because it was too low to the floor the other way. So it's actually sitting up on my stool, which is probably not the safest idea, but y'all, we work with what we got here. Working with what we got. Right now it looks like an ocean, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like an ocean sky with like the ocean down here? How easy is that to create that look? I feel like this is something that is totally beginner friendly, that anybody can do. I'm just blending the edge before I get in here and move all this paint around. Okay, now I can see that this blue has really dried up, this dusty blue. Let's just throw a little bit more down here and a little bit more of that sea glass. And now, now because my paint won't drip like from the top, I'll spray this a little bit. That's okay, see what it runs here? I'm gonna catch it. If I did that at the top, what's gonna happen is it's gonna get really hard to control your drips and your runs, and it would be a lot more difficult. So once you start to swirl this around, all your paint is combining together. All of these colors are just creating the most beautiful textured sky. Don't you think? Do you like it? I do. You know what I don't like? How much blue is right there? We need to put more white. Just a bit of white here. Let's get my hand up underneath it again. That's better. I need even more. Give me more, more white. So this is just fluff that I'm using. Better. So now you can see how that base coat kind of held my color, right? Like it, having that little white base coat really helped kind of hold the paint where it's supposed to be and making it look pretty. You like it? It looks so pretty, doesn't it? I'm not lying when I say that this is easy. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do this, I promise. If you want to watch more tutorials on how to achieve a beautiful sky on your furniture, I have a bunch on my YouTube. You can find my channel at the Top Drawer RVA um, on YouTube and there's, there's a lot of videos like this because I do this look a lot. This is, this is a great base for putting other things on. When I do this on the side, on the front of the piece, what's going to happen is we're going to fade it down into green and then it's going to become a metal. What do we think? I'm looking at you now. I can see all your questions and comments. Do you love this? Do you think that it looks like a sky? Does it look authentic? I mean, I really do think that it does. Remember, the edges are going to be sanded. I'm going to paint the back and I'm going to be adding a meadow on the front and a barn or maybe a church, something rustic, something 
looking a little old on the front. I haven't decided yet, but the edges will be sanded. There will be black wax. Um, when I finish a look like this, there's usually paint splatters on the corners, really making it look truly authentic. So before I flip this around, anybody have any questions about how to create a sky? I only used one, two, three, four colors, right? Hurricane gray, if you don't have hurricane gray, you could try um, manatee gray. I do like manatee gray as well for that look because it's got a lavender hue to it. I used fluff, I used um, dusty blue, and I used a little bit of sea glass. And combining all of those colors just gives you the most beautiful faded sky. Do you like it? Throw me some heart, show me some love. Let me know that this is something that you think, uh, think you could try because I really think anybody can do this. It's not hard, it's just a, a pretty, pretty blend. My YouTube is The Top Drawer RVA on YouTube, and there's many, many, many videos, probably five. <laughs> I do this look a lot. It's, it's really, it's just such a great base. So this I'm happy with. I don't even know if I wanna add clouds because it actually really looks like clouds already, don't you think? Like when I'm, even when I'm looking up here in the camera, I'm seeing those clouds kind of smoke through the middle like that. I don't think I need to add any clouds. I'll show you how to do one just because I'm here and I'm, I can do it. Um, this is the fluff, right? This is just a separate brush with a little bit of fluff. If you wanted to add like a little bit more clouds, there's a couple different ways you could do this. It keeps banging together, sorry. You can just blot it on like this and then you could use a paper towel and just gently touch them with a paper towel. You could also take your best dang brush that you just had with your paint on it and really blend out those circles to create a very pretty subtle cloud. Isn't that great? So gorgeous, right? It just gives that, that really pretty little soft effect. All you're doing is adding a little bit of that fluff. You don't even have to be like, look, I could do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> and then you just smoke it out. Smoke it out with your little best dang brush it's really called your best dang brush if you're looking for it. And you can find all the products I'm using today, DixieBellPaint.com, and they are fabulous. These are water-based paints. They blend so easily. You can create a beautiful masterpiece. Look at those sky clouds. Look at them. So pretty, right? Maybe I should do one more over here. Now that I've started to do them, I like them. I get distracted quite easily by, by this. Let's add some more clouds. And then we'll flip this little box over and start to do the front because we're going to do the same thing on the front and i'm going to do the same thing on the sides of this piece and then of course like i said we'll paint something on the front a barn i'm not sure yet i haven't decided barn some sheep maybe even a church i'm feeling like a church might be cute for christmas but i don't want it to be too season specific right because it's a piece of furniture people might want to keep this out all year round do you like it it's looking cute right so cute so once again color recap before i flip it Hurricane Gray, Dusty Blue, Sea Glass, Fluff. Best Dang Brush, nice small circles, nice small swirls, and you too can create this gorgeous look. So should we flip it over and work on the front? Have you had enough looks in this? Can you come in a little bit closer before I take you away? Super cute, right? Does it look real? I mean, from where it started at to this, it looks fairly authentic to me. And remember, this is chalk mineral paint, so it is going to dry a little bit different than what you're seeing right here on this front. I, the darks are gonna darken a little bit. I do like this though, I'm not gonna lie, that smoky hurricane gray is really, uh, really calling my name. I really like it. It looks beautiful. All right, now this is where the trouble could happen because I'm going to flip this on camera. And it's a giant wood box. Let's see how strong I can be without hurting myself. Like I said, I've got it balanced up here on my stool. Oh, sweet. Nobody died. <laughs> it's balanced up here on my stool, so anything could have happened. Let's just touch these edges a little bit more where I didn't really get to get underneath and see. Making sure that I cover it. And then I'll get in on this edge too. Making sure I've got it. Remember, I'm going to be sanding the edges back a little bit and uh, adding black or brown wax. So even if the edges aren't perfect, you're not really gonna be able to see because they're just going to be faded in. Perfection, okay, so now you can see my box. See, it's a really cute rustic box. Um, whoever built this, because this, this is a hand-built item, 
I can't open it all the way because it'll hit the wall, but the, the ropes actually catch the handles. It's like a rope and handle combination. And when this opens, it prevents the lid from falling all the way over, which is super genius. Genius. Can you check it out? Look at how cute that is. So you're actually not even needing to add any hardware. I'm going to leave it rustic and be using the actual um, pieces of, of string that are on the sides. I like that rope look. I think it's going to be authentic to the piece. All right, so let's work on the front. So the plan for the front will be to do the same thing. I'm going to pin this up a little bit with that. All right, so let's look at this. So now we have this naked space. Ready for more clouds? Should we do it again? Let's do it again. Now this time, we're going to take the sky and we're going to fade it down into, um, into a metal, right? So I'm going to add a couple more colors because we're going to make it down to like a farmland that we can paint the barn and paint all the things on there and go from there. So I see Leah watching. Hi, Leah. We're going to add burlap, which is a gorgeous kind of a, a creamy brown. I'm going to open Holy Glockamole. Listen, do you know that Holy Glockamole is only available in this tiny little baby size? <laughs> so sad. I love this color. This is one of my fave colors, Holy Glockamole. And listen, if you're painting anything for Christmas this year, um, this is the color of the Grinch. So you better get it. Get those cutie little four ounce size. I actually think I'm gonna order a bunch of four ounce sizes in the colors that I use for this look because I, I need it. I need these colors and I don't want them in the big giant containers. I feel like they'd be better in the smaller containers. One more color I'm gonna open up here at the bottom is chocolate. Chocolate is a beautiful, rich brown if I can open it. Sorry, I'm gonna have to bang it on the floor. Hold tight. There we go. Magic, like magic. Just. Hit it around and it'll open up. Woo! Chunky, chunky paint. All right, let's do the same thing to the sky that we just did on the top. So also, while I have you here, I need opinions, y'all. This box is only maybe 18 inches high. Right now I have it up on my stool so that I can work. Do you think that I should leave it low and rustic or I should add legs to give it some height? I will be painting the sides in the back, of course. The back will be just probably painted in the sky motif, the same as the sides. Um, but do you think it should be bigger? Like it should be taller. I can easily attach feet to this piece because it's just maybe a little low to the ground for me. We'll see. All right, let's go back in. So I am going to start with Hurricane Gray. You can see those screws on the sides here. The screws are nice and rustic i love that look underneath this fluff coat that i've got on here you can see knots of wood there's like a little knot out here i love that look more rustic the better so somebody's saying add legs add legs add feet i mean it's not terribly heavy but i think i would do chunky wood feet because it needs to look um it needs to be this the same i can't put something like hairpin legs it needs to stay like period specific right so hurricane gray dusty blue and y'all i'm being fairly heavy-handed with my paint this paint blends easy so i'm not really worried about that i just want to be able to get this color on here okay that was the brush that i used just those two colors with dusty blue hurricane gray now this one i put a lot of white on there when i did the clouds so let's wipe off some of this white and go back to the sea glass Sea glass is that really pretty green. And I want to see these screws. I want to see the life on this piece. I told you, I like rusty, crusty way better than sleek and modern. I want it to look old. Okay, beautiful hurricane gray, dusty blue. Here we have that sea glass. I'm not gonna do a lot of white. I'm just gonna do white here in the middle, okay? Because we're gonna stop after I blend this down and we're going to wipe off my brush and we're going to move into the metal part of this piece, okay? You wanna come in nice and close again so I can see what I am doing. Excuse my arm then when it goes in front. So this is my best dang brush, right? Best dang brush really is the best dang brush. I'm going to spray it so it's damp with water. 
have my cloth on the floor to blot off. And I'm gonna try and hold this. I think I can hold it here. I don't want it moving when I make my circular motions. I'm gonna stay fairly close to the top to begin with because I don't want this dark to travel down too much, but I will wipe it off. Okay, once again, small circular motions. Bringing the dark down a little bit on the sides. I always like it when stuff is a little bit darker down to the edges. I'm gonna wipe it off again. It's holding all that paint in there. Spray it. And then let's start to blend these clouds up. So remember that this brush is gonna hold a lot of paint, right? If you need to stop to wipe off the excess amounts, you saw how heavy handed I put that paint on, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm usually a heavy handed painter. If you need to stop to wipe some off, take a minute, wipe off your brush. You don't want it to be soaking wet, you're just being damp with your, your brush. Your best dang brush is staying nice and damp, okay? Let's start to soften these lines. Once I kind of get this part softened, I can easily go back in and add clouds with my fluff. And remember that this is gonna have a barn on it, right? We're gonna have a barn or maybe an old church or maybe a white barn. There's another poll question for you because you guys are gonna come back in and read about the legs. I always ask everybody's opinion. Do you think right here I should put a and FYI, it has to be here. For some reason, my eyeballs only will paint off center. <laughs> I don't know what, it's just my artist brain. There will be a barn here, fence post here, probably sprinkled in little, here we could do either dandelion fluff, snow, white barn, or red barn. What is the preference? What is the preference? Red barn or white barn? If we go white barn, I'm thinking this has to be a winter sort of a scene, right? Because I just feel like that matches a bit better. White barns feel more wintry to me. If it's a red barn, I don't know if I would do winter. So I can do a winter scene, I could do a fall scene, I could do, I don't wanna do flowers. I might do like dandelion, dandelion fluff, like I said, but uh, I think that's what we are going to do. Just adding a little bit more fluff in here, which is the white just to bring up some of these clouds and we got one of my hairs in the mess. Let's take that out. Sometimes these best dang brushes shed a touch. Don't be afraid if they shed. Once it's dry, you can come back in and easily sand off those extra little hairs. Let's add some clouds in here. So the reason I'm adding the clouds now before I go down and do the middle is because I'm going to be using darker browns and greens on the bottom and I cannot mix my brush up with that and go back to the sky. If I grab my other best dang brush, I could, because sometimes I work with more than one at a time. Um, but for now, I think I'll just stick with this guy. Okay, so now we have kind of cloudy scene. Barn will be here. Sticks will be here. Sanding these edges back so some of the wood shows. Dun, dun, dun. Do I wanna put a bit, I wanna put more white. I want more clouds. I'm feeling like it looks a little a little dark. Let's lighten her up some. How are we doing? Holding on? Ooh, how about a cabin? Kathy challenging me. Paint a cabin, huh? I was thinking like like a barn. Last piece I did, did you guys see the piece I did a couple weeks ago, which was like a broken down old farmhouse? It was all grays and browns. Um, really rusty crusty, looked like an abandoned house. I, I really like that, but I was thinking maybe even like a, a church? Maybe like a white, a white church and put like a little wreath above the door. I could still put a wreath above the door if it was a, if it was barn. I don't want to make it too Christmas though, because if I go to Christmas, then people might not want to buy it, right? Because then they'd be like, oh, it's a box for Christmas. I feel like it should be able to be out all year round. Can you see how I'm adding these gorgeous cloud layers in right here? Let's see, it does look like a winter sky, doesn't it? Especially with this dark hurricane gray. I'm coming back in and adding a touch more clouds. Here's the other handy tip for today. So you see how I'm doing these clouds here? Don't go putting them all in a row because nothing in nature is 
perfectly symmetrical, right? Like if I were to make the clouds go, say all the way across in one line, that would be weird because clouds don't work like that, right? Clouds are more soft and billowy and there's really no rhyme or reason to how they fluff out. So I'm just gonna add them another cloud up here because I feel like it needs to be a little bit less even than down there. What are we thinking? Cute. Definitely a barn. Somebody's saying definitely a barn. You can also do clouds in another way. I could go backwards. So I could take my other brush, grab a little bit of that hurricane gray, and then you're going to do the same thing, but you're just using reverse colors. So by going in with the hurricane gray over top of the white, you're just creating clouds with dimension. Uh, if you were doing a beach scene, which I've done before, you could be doing pinks and oranges. Um, you could do like even a lavender a little bit on the edges. It's entirely up to you. This is, there's no rules in painting. I tell you guys this all the time. No rules in painting. You can paint whatever makes your heart happy. But I recommend definitely adding a little bit of shading and dimension. Layers, darkening, lightening. But you can see how fast and easy this is with this Mustang brush. It is my favorite brush, you guys. Favorite brush. Ooh, I like that. It's a little dark and stormy, doesn't it? Okay, so let's bring it down and start to create our meadow. So I need to wipe off my light paint. I need to go to another brush, okay? So this brush has not got any blue on it. Our last line was a lot of sea glass mixed in with that fluff, right? Now we're gonna build a meadow. So I'm gonna go into burlap. And don't worry, this is gonna fade out to just a, a background, like, cause right now that looks like a beach, which is great, but I'm not, I'm not doing beach today. So the lightest color is gonna go up, touching where the clouds are. I'm gonna go back to the white, just here, just so that when I do pull this together, it's gonna give it enough of a tonal difference. Okay, so here we are, burlap, touch of white, totally looks like a beach right now. It's <laughs> not a beach, I swear. We're gonna darken it up. I'm gonna use the same brush. I'm gonna go into Holy Guacamole. Look at, there's like a little chip out of the wood here. I, I love it, I love it. So a little Holy Guacamole. I also have on the floor um, Gravel Road, Palmetto, but right now we're just gonna go into the chocolate, okay? Put that chocolate on the edges. And now I'm gonna go actually back into the sea glass. Trust me, it's enough to just dull this color a little bit. And now we're gonna we're gonna go. We're gonna blend it together. It looks like a hot mess right now, right? But actually still looks pretty cool. <laughs> it looks like almost like a beach. Last time I did one that was a beach scene, it came down in the middle. I put a sun, lavender reds, I think there was purples, it was really pretty. So I've got my best ink brush, I'm gonna spray it. I'm gonna start here. The reason I'm starting here is if I start down here, what's gonna happen? You're gonna pull all this dark up where you don't want the dark to be, right? So I'm gonna start here and blend this part first and then move to the corners, all right? I'm just blurring the lines, people, just blurring the line because this is not the focus of the piece. The focus of the piece is going to be the barn or the church or whatever it is that I decide to paint up here. But for now, we're just going to blur these edges together. See how I've not got into the chocolate yet? I'm only doing the light part. So when this is actually, say, fence posts and grass and rocks and green, that part just disappears into nothing. That's the, that's the objective. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the greens. You can always add, you can't really take away very well. So adding is easier, taking away is harder. Go back in, add a little bit more green over here. I feel like I'm missing some green. And we're gonna just keep blending. It's all about building those layers, right? Can you, can you start to see a little bit about what's happening here? 
with the depth and the tone on tone, how this is giving you a base for what you're gonna be painting. I know it's hard to understand unless you can kind of see the final picture and we're not there yet, but once we do, it's getting too dry over here, I'm gonna actually spray it a little bit. Once we do get that barn on here, and, and you know, most of the area is covered in a barn or church, whatever it is I decide to actually commit to, <laughs> then this part just kind of disappears into the background. Again, small circular motions, best dang brush, and that is where I will stop. Okay, so what do we think? Can you, can you understand the concept now of how I'm doing the sky into the meadow? There will be trees, possibly. I usually do a fence post with like a bird on it. So there'll for sure be a fence post kind of going down from bigger to smaller. And then the, the farm house, the barn house, whatever it is that is side will be over here. Do we like it? Is it good? Do you think you would try this? I think that this is a look that anybody can achieve if you give it a go. Um, the colors used today were hurricane gray, dusty blue, a little bit of that um, sea glass, some fluff for the clouds. And then I came down into burlap, holy guacamole, and a tiny bit of chocolate. Do you like it? Nettie says, this is amazing. Thank you, thank you. I like it. You guys, this is not that hard. I really feel like this is something anybody can achieve. And then you can paint whatever you want on here. Now, here's a, like a little handy dandy tip of the day. Say you can do this because anybody can do this on any piece of furniture. All you need is a couple colors and that little swirly motion, right? You can do this, but you struggle with the hand painting of a barn or hand painting of a church like I'm talking about. There's a transfer called On the Farm by Dixie Bell. It's an actual barn, people. It is an actual barn. You could paint this, take that barn and put it right there. <laughs> and you would have a barn on your piece that looks like hand painted. It's like a magical trick. Um, there's a level for everybody. You don't have to be worried about coming in and hand painting something, put a transfer. Heck, do a stencil, do some decoupage, find a napkin with a cute barn on it, slap that puppy on there and you are good to go. What do you think? Do you think you would try it? I would love it if you did. And if you did try it, tag me at the top drawer VA because I want to see what you create with your Dixie Belle paint. I really do think this is something that's achievable for every skill level. The next step is where you want to take it. Do you want to hand paint? Do you want to transfer? Do you want to decoupage? Up to you, up to you. The world is, the world is open. The sky's the limit, right?